Potable water tanks and towers are an important part of our infrastructure. However, many of us don't realize they're the last stop before that water makes its way to your faucet. Welcome to Tap Talk, where we discuss what's really going on in your water system. We safely put a diver into a water storage tank. We suck all the sediment out of the bottom of it. We get them nice and clean and we pull the diver out. That way the tank gets cleaned, but they never had to take it out of service. We inspect tanks with an underwater camera so we can show them what's going on and then we go back with a dive crew to remove the sediment while leaving the treated drinking water in place. The diver dresses up in a dry suit. He's washed down with a chlorine solution so he can get into the water system, remove the sediment, and then we videotape the uh, clean tank. Job's pretty smooth. If you have a good crew, it's very smooth. We're all pretty much experienced. We all went to school for this. You know, we've done a lot of training. I'm Edwin Hernandez. I'm the lead diver here for Ron Perrin Water Technologies. Spent some time offshore right after Ocean Corps, graduated in 2016, and uh, spent like about a year and a half offshore that I came here. Uh, Edwin uh, had a uh, fairly typical start. He graduated, he uh, wanted to work offshore, and he gave that a try, and he found out that that offshore life wasn't necessarily for him. Hi, I'm Jeff Brown. I'm the Director of Student Services at the Ocean Corporation a school that teaches commercial diving that has been around since 1969. And we want to talk specifically about one of our graduates, Edwin, who graduated uh, almost two years ago and has experienced a lot of success at Ron Perrin Water Technologies. And my job here at the Ocean Corporation is to help students succeed while they're in school and then to help them start their new career once they get closer to graduating. And that certainly has happened with Edwin. So he had tried that the, the offshore in the Gulf of Mexico and uh, found out that uh, water treatments, you know, diving in tanks, you know, just fit his personality better. It usually takes like about like this size of the tank. It takes about, you know, how long I was down there for? Like an hour and 30 minutes, really easy. It's really not hard work, you just gotta know what you're doing. We use commercially certified divers to clean water storage tanks and towers. This is important because water storage tanks and towers pick up sediment over time. And this sediment can harbor bacteria, protozoa, and viruses. The best way to keep that stuff out of there and to keep it from getting a foothold in your water system is to keep your tank clean. It's very different from like, obviously it's a whole lot different from being out of the water. It's, everything's very slow. I mean. Everything's very like focused. You have to be focused on everything you do. Very detailed work, and uh, can't really mess up down there. Cause that could be fatal. We are cleaning a 25,000 gallon ground storage tank here in North Texas. Joe Riley is our diver today, and we're going to be removing sediment. First, we set up our our dive rig, which is compressors, leads to the volume tank to the filters, to the hose, to the umbilical of main air, to the hat, and then to your lungs. That's the air process. Um, what's that suit you're wearing there? Uh, it's a dry suit. Yeah. Um, it, it keeps you fully enclosed. You have like your wrist seal here and neck seal. So it completely seals you off from the water. We use that to not only keep us dry and warm, but also to isolate us from the water. Keep in mind these are potable water tanks, so it's drinking water, and a chlorine solution to spray off the diver and equipment before they go in the water so we don't cross-contaminate between tanks. The weight belt is what keeps you negatively buoyant so that you can get down below, uh, below the surface. Without the weight belt, I'd just be kind of bobbing along the surface, not getting any work done. This is Joe, I'm the dive supervisor for Ron Perry Water Technologies. 
I went to dive school in Panama City with the United States Marine Corps Combatant Diver Program and I became a dive supervisor through the Marine Corps as well. Well, of course, it takes a lot of physical stamina to climb a 150-foot water tank and then still have the energy to dress out in a dry suit and enter a water system and clean, clean it or inspect a water tower. I've gained a lot of experience diving in potable water tanks with Ron Perrin, and here I am running the dive crew. Well, once we get all our equipment set up, we get our pumps up and running, and that's when we go ahead and put the diver in the water. Uh, once the diver's in the water, he's able to use the pumps and the hoses to just pull out all the uh, sediment from the bottom of the tank and any, any other kind of garbage or gross stuff that we don't want in our drinking water, we'll get it all out of there. You have somebody watching the rack. The diver is inside the tank, of course. He has a tender. We, we will usually have another ground person just going back and forth, making sure that they have everything they need on the top. So you have somebody top row, bottom of the row, inside the tank. Make it hot. So our crew technician just told us to make the suction hot. So our guy down there making it hot. Making it hot. As you can see, there's already some sediment coming out. Communication is extremely important in this job. Knowing what the diver is doing underwater is the most important thing and making sure he's all right. Joe today is working the rack and he is in the dive station. So he's communicating to the diver, also watching him on video. Roger that, it's on its way. Hey, let's get another section of hose down there. So as you can see, uh, I've got communications with the diver as well as the tenders up top side. Um, that way, uh, we can that diver can let me know everything he needs to get the job done, and we can uh, get in contact with the people up top side. Uh, we've also got eyes on the diver's air supply, and while monitoring all this stuff, we can make sure uh, the diver's not in any kind of danger, and he's got everything he needs. And I'll rotate usually three divers and then we have Victor who's a ground man who keeps the generator and pump and everything gassed up and lubricated. Again, that's our external hose which is connected to an internal hose that the diver has in his hands. Basically a vacuum that's sucking out all the dirty stuff that's on bottom. Soon it will be clean and good to drink. These tanks could be really, really dirty sometimes. Sometimes they could be half cleaned or sometimes it be barely any sediment. And so as far as conditions go, I would say don't stir it up. Don't stir up the sediment like as soon as you get to the floor. It's really easy to lose your viz and stir up the whole tank, especially on the smaller ones. But yeah, just, just don't stir up the sediment in there. It'll be easier. Well, if it's normal sediment, half inch to three inches, we can usually get that done in a day. Every once in a while, you want to under one that has feet instead of inches, and that can take a couple of days. Oh, there's more sediment now. So when we show up on dive site or dive cleaning, uh, the first thing is to do our JSA. Uh, JSA stands for Job Safety Analysis. So we'll have a run through uh, about climbing, fall protection, slips, trips, and falls, uh, job hazards, and then controlled hazards, how we avoid those things. Our second step would be uh, evaluate where we're gonna set up all our gear, uh, where we're gonna rig it to. On ground tanks it's pretty simple for uh, just going up to the hatch area, but with elevateds we had to put it on the catwalk 
everything will be going up there, finding out where the hatch is. And then uh, a climber will go up, set up a pulley system, and then we can start raising equipment up to the top. Once we have all the equipment up, the next step would be uh, priming, getting a flow of water that the diver will be working with. And then once we have that primed, uh, the diver will start suiting up and then he'll enter the tank and the cleaning will begin. Yeah, now to start off, he's gonna clear off an area underneath him so when he steps down, he's not stirring up sediment. And then eventually he'll add for this. Add this and maybe reach a little further out. And then when he's really ready to get going, he'll add this on the end of it, which gives him a faster, cleaner, um, to be more efficient with the cleaning and also do a better job. We were able to see it on video, the before and after. We had some silt on the bottom, then it just looked like it was very clean after. So I feel a lot better about knowing exactly what we've got in our tank now. I'm usually uh, set up for about an hour or two, depending on the size of the tank. This is a small one, so it didn't take too long. Um, and then, you know, the diving itself, the actual cleaning process can be anywhere from 30 minutes to, you know, three hours, six hours, sometimes multiple days, just depending on how long the tank, uh, how long it takes to get all that stuff out of there. And how big the tank is. Yeah. We do them anywhere from 25,000 to 25 million. Ron Perry and Technologies for over 20 years actually. So been, we've been pleased, really good service we got from them every time and they're really quick uh, about responding to any needs we may have. It's important to clean your tanks so they won't look like this. All this black stuff that's what's in your water. The diver just now finish cleaning that whole entire potable water tank and it's coming out like this clear this is what people drink when people shower and this is what they used to shower in now that we are we had our diving services clean it out now that's how it looks clear so i think it's important for the for Ron Perrin to clean your water tank so it can look clear like this. Your shower in this. Your kids might drink it. Your grandma might drink it. It's pretty nasty looking. I don't know if you would drink this, but I know I would. So just think about next time you open your faucet, see what you're expecting. It's really important important to have Ron Perrin by your side. These tanks too often go out of sight and out of mind in many communities. We, we see tanks every week that have never been cleaned. Last year we inspected about 850 tanks and we only cleaned about 150 because a lot of people just don't understand the importance of keeping the tanks clean and keeping the sediment out. If people were up on the top of a tank and looked down in and saw how much sediment was in there or saw these videos that we shoot of how much sediment is in tanks and in some towns you know how bad a shape the inside of their tanks are in um, I think they they push for more uh, frequent cleanings I think the, there are just so many competing interests for regulations nowadays that uh, it would be very difficult to get a, a tank cleaning regulation through in, in most states. Some would possibly go for it, but I think it would be difficult to get through just because there's so many competing interests for, for what needs to be regulated and a lot of resistance to new regulations. Being approached by this whole project maybe uh, realized that we don't really think about the water towers 
you know, and with the recent papers coming out with the EPA, obviously more people are starting to uh, become more concerned about it. And I think that's a good thing. I think the more uh, safety we have, especially with all the outbreaks that happen all the time, a lot of times we don't know where they come from, sometimes we do. Um, but the more we know about it, the safer we can be, and I think that's a good thing. What we've learned is we're fighting a war in the water storage tank. Chlorine is keeping all this stuff at bay. But when it gets too big or the chlorine gets too weak, we're losing the war. When we lose the war in the water tank, people get sick. Sometimes people die. Let's get rid of the sediment in the water storage tanks and fight the war back at the water treatment plant where we're treating the water. We understand the war there. We can completely win by removing the sediment in the water storage tanks.